OK, so let's figure out how we might use this in um, an actual example. It says that the diagram shows the region R, which is bounded by the x axis, the y axis and the curve with equation y equals nine minus x squared. The region is rotated, rotated through 360 degrees about the x axis find the exact volume of the solid generated. So if it's being rotated about the x-axis, that means it's going to kind of make this sort of shape like this. So it's going to kind of be like a cone, apart from the sides of the cone are going to be curved inwards like this. I'm going to get rid of that off the diagram because it's going to get a little bit confusing. Now, if it's going about the x-axis, we know that the volume is going to be pi y squared dx between a and b. I want to dispel something that sometimes people get confused with. Sometimes people might think, OK, great, I'm just going to integrate the y squared. So that's going to become a third y cubed. I'm just going to do it with the limits of a and b. This is completely wrong. The reason this is completely wrong is because of this dx part that we've got at the end. This dx part says with respect to x. So you can't integrate y squared with respect to x because they're completely different variables. So we're going to need to make sure that we actually substitute in for y squared in just a second. If it said at the end dy, then this thing here would be perfectly acceptable, but it doesn't. So I'm going to erase all of these things that I've got here and we'll see how this question really should be done. So the volume is going to be equal to pi and y squared in this case is going to be 9 minus x squared. That's what y is. And I'm going to square that. And now I can do it with respect to x because everything is in terms of x. But you'll notice here I need to be really careful of what the limits are. Well, if this was a and this was b, it's pretty simple to see that a is going to be 0 because it wants it from the x-axis. But we need to find out what the coordinates of b is. So I'm just going to find out what that is when y is equal to 0. In other words, you get 9 minus x squared. 9 is equal to x squared, and so x is equal to plus or minus 3. But it's pretty obvious in the context of this question that this is going to be 3. So now that I've got it looking like this, I can actually perform the integration, and but it, not until this section here is written in its expanded form. So I'm going to do that in its expanded polynomial form that we've got there. So it's going to be pi between 0 and 3. Expanding these brackets, uh, you'll have 81 minus 18x squared, and then x squared times x squared is going to be a positive x to the power of 4 with respect to x. We can't integrate this in year 1 techniques, but we can integrate this with year 1 techniques, which is why it all has to be expanded. So what I'm going to do is I'm now actually going to perform that integration. So the 81 is going to become 81x. I'm going to increase the power to 3 and divide by 3, so I get 6. And for this part, I'm going to increase the power to 5, and I'm going to divide by 5, so I get a fifth x to the 5 between 0 and 3. Now, I'm going to keep pi outside the front, and I'm going to substitute 3 into all of these. So it's going to be 81 times 3 minus 6 times 3 cubed plus a fifth times 3 to the power of 5. And I'm going to be subtracting from that all of these bits here with 0 substituted in. And when I substitute in 0 to all of these bits, I'm just going to get 0 minus 0 plus 0. So to be honest with you, I don't even really need to bother doing that because I can clearly see that it's all going to be 0. So let's leave pi there for a second. And we're going to do 81 times 3 minus 6 times 3 cubed. And it's plus a fifth times 3 fifths, 3 to the power of 5 plus a fifth times 3 to the power of 5, and I get 648 over 5, which I'm going to leave as 648 pi over 5. And that's good for what my volume is. Because it said it wanted the exact volume, I'm not going to put that in its decimal form. OK, let's try another one. This time, the curve is y equals the square root of x minus 1. The region R is bounded by the curve, the y-axis, so the curve, the y-axis, and the lines y equals 1 and y equals 3. And it's going to be rotated 360 degrees about the y-axis. We're going to find the volume of the solid generated. Now, the textbook does x-axis for exercise A and y-axis for exercise B, but I like doing both of them together to make sure that you're being careful of which one you need to select.
So if it's going about the y-axis, we know that the volume is going to be equal to, instead of pi y squared dx, it's going to be pi x squared dy. And the limits are between 1 and 3. And you can just clearly see that, that the bottom bit is 1 and the top bit here is 3. So it's the same as before. We need to find out what x squared is equal to. So I need a little bit of calculation on the side. If y is equal to the square root of x minus 1, I need to find out what x squared is so that I can integrate it. So I'm going to square both sides. y squared would be equal to x minus 1. I'm then going to do y squared plus 1 equals x. And then I'm going to square it. So I have y squared plus 1 squared is equal to x squared. So it's going to be pi, the integral between 1 and 3, of y squared plus 1 all squared dy. And the thing I'm happy here is this expression is y and this is dy. So I can actually do the integration. I'm just going to remind you of that, what we did here. This expression was in x and we did it with respect to x. So they matched each other. So what I'm going to do is expand the brackets. So it's going to be pi integrating between 1 and 3 y to the power of 4 plus 2y squared plus 1, integrating that with respect to y. I'm going to go from my sigma to the square brackets because I'm actually going to do the integration. So I'm going to raise to the power of 5, but then divide by 5. I'm going to raise to the power of 3 instead of 2, but then I'm going to divide by 3. And then I'm just going to make that become a y like this between 1 and 3. So do show your substitution because this is where the marks are for this part that you need. So I'm going to put in 3. So it's going to be a fifth times 3 to the power of 5 plus 2 thirds times 3 cubed plus 3. And then from all of this, I'm going to minus, and I like to use brackets here. Well, when I sub in 1 for y, you're just going to get 1 any time for y. So it's going to be a fifth plus 2 thirds plus 3. 1. Close off the brackets. I'm just going to leave pi there for a second and I'm going to do that calculation. I'm going to do the first chunk and then the second chunk. So I'm going to just store 3 as my answer just because I find that's going to be a little bit easier. So I'm going to do a fifth. So answer to the power of 5. I'm going to divide that by 5 and then I'm going to do 2 thirds of my answer cubed and then I'm going to do plus my answer. So that first chunk is 348 over 5. And then the second chunk is going to be a fifth plus 2 thirds plus 1. So I'm minusing 28 over 15. So I'll do my 348 over 5 minus the answer. And you get 1016 over 15 pi. Notice how you can have either pi coming after the fraction, or you can have a pi as part of the numerator. Either of these two presentations would be absolutely fine for what you're expecting for the answer there. Okay. So let's just try a couple more of these. Um, this time it is the curve with this equation, and the region is bound by the curve. The y-axis, the lines y equals 2 and the line y equals 4. So I'm just going to trace those out on here. It's going to be here here, here, and the y-axis. And it's going to be rotated around. So if you imagine, it's going to be creating this kind of like 3D sort of shape um, with this all becoming like 3D disks as it becomes 3D. Anyway, I digress. And it's going 360 degrees, so full rotation about the y-axis. Find the volume of the solid generated. So maybe you want to have a pause and try this video yourself, uh, try this example yourself and you can compare it to my answer in just a second. So have a go at this one first, see if you get the same answer as me. Okay, so it's going about the y-axis. So the volume is going to be pi x squared dy, and it's between two and four. So I'm gonna figure out what x squared is equal to. Let's do some work on over this bit. So y is equal to two x plus one. Well, if it's cube rooted, that means it's to the power of a third. So I'm going to cube both sides. So y cubed equals 2x plus 1. So it's going to be y cubed minus 1 divided by 2 is equal to x. 
So I can square that now for the x squared bit. So it's going to be pi between 2 and 4, and I want it to be y cubed minus 1 over 2, all squared, dy. And again, it's great because this bit's y, this bit's y, they're matching each other. So I'm going to tidy the numerator. I'm just going to expand the numerator and know that on the bottom I've got 4 from the 2 squared. So it's going to be y to the power of 6 minus 2y cubed plus 1. And that's going to be integrated with respect to y. Now there's a neat little trick here that you can do because I don't really want to have to deal with something divided by 4. Because everything is being divided by 4 now, I could just divide everything by 4 at the end. So instead of having pi outside the front, I'm going to take that quarter and I'm going to put it right at the beginning so that I've got y to the power of 6 minus 2y cubed plus 1 without the quarter in there. It's just going to make it way easier to divide everything by 4 at the end rather than in the middle. So I'm actually going to start the integration. I'm going to increase that to the 7 and divide by 7. I'm going to increase that to 4 and divide by 4. And 2 divided by 4 is a half. And then I'm going to have y there between 2 and 4. So let's leave out the pi by 4 at the front. And I'm going to sub in 4. So it's going to be a 7, 4 to the power of 4, oh, to the power of 7, minus a half, 4 to the power of 4, plus 4. Minus the same thing, but with 2 now. So that's a 7th, 2 to the power of 7, minus a half, 2 to the power of 4, plus 2. Now, once you've written out that substitution, you could technically just type this into your calculator and just get the answer. But they want you to, they do need to see this substitution here. So if you want to just type that in your graphics or your class with calculator, you can do, and it will give you the answer straight away. So I'm going to try this with my answer is 4, and I'm going to do a 7th of the answer to the power of 7 minus a half my answer to the power of 4. And then I think the last bit is just plus answer. So that's pi over 4. 15516 over 7. And this time I'm going to do the same thing, but for my answer, I want the answer to be 2. So I'm just going to use this neat trick. I hope I can. Um, no, I'm not going to. I'm going to just go through everywhere there's an answer and I'm just going to replace it with a 2. And I get 86 over 7. So all that's left is to subtract those fractions. So what's the numerator? That's 15516 minus 86 for the numerators. I'll then divide that by 7. So I've got 15430 over 7. Whoops. That's pi over 4 times 15430 over 7. And I'm just going to divide that by 4 so that I get my answer. So it's divided by 4. So it's 7715 over 14 pi. 7715 over 14 pi. So just take it easy. Make sure that you're always integrating with respect to the right letter. And you can always check this expression here. You can actually just type that into your calculator to see if you end up with the correct answer. Obviously, you'll need to make sure you multiply by pi over 4 as well. So I'd like you to have a go at trying this one yourself. And then you can try a mixture of exercise 5a and 5b because they are all to do with um, a is all to do with rotation about the x-axis and b is all about the y-axis you just need to be identifying which bit is rotating around okay try this question and then i will go through it in just a second so here's a good place to pause the video okay so this one says y equals x to the 2 over 3 minus 9 to the half the finite region R, which is bounded by the curve C, the x-axis, and the line x equals 125. So the different bits of it are now going to be here, here, and here, is being rot is shown in figure 3, and it's being rotated through 360 degrees about the x-axis to form a solid. So when it becomes solid, it's going to kind of be this sort of shape like that. Um, and it says use calculus to find the exact value of the volume of this solid. 
So we know here that we need to see what this limit is going to be. Well, it's when y is equal to zero. So when y is equal to zero, we've got x to the power of two over three minus nine to the power of a half equals zero. So I'm just gonna not even write the half down there because I don't even need to square it. So nine equals x to the power of two over three. Well, I can do both sides to the power of three over two, and that would tell me what x to the power of one is. Just think about that, x to the power of 2 over 3 to the power of 3 over 2 is x to the power of 1, because these powers would multiply to give you 1. So I'll do 9 to the power of 3 over 2, 9 to the power of 3 over 2, that's 27. Could have done that without the calculator, really, couldn't I? So x is equal to 27. So here we are, for this volume, we are going to be doing, because it's around the x-axis, we know it's going to have a dx. And it's pi y squared dx between 27 and 125. So y squared is pretty easy. y squared is just going to be x to the 2 over 3 minus 9. Couldn't have made it any easier because of the fact this was a square root. So it's going to be pi the integral between 127 and 125 of x to the power of 2 over 3 minus 9 with respect to x. Whoops, don't want to have the answer showing. So then we're going to do our integration. So I'm going to increase the power. You can do 2 thirds plus 1, which is 5 thirds. And you're going to divide by 5 thirds, which is multiplying by 3 fifths. And 9 is just going to become 9x. And that's between 27 and 125. So it wants the exact value, so I don't want any decimals here. I'm going to open up the brackets. We're going to do 3 fifths times 125 to the power of 5 over 3 minus 9 times 125. Subtract 3 fifths, 27 to the power of 5 over 3 minus 9 times 27. So we're going to have pi. Let's get these numbers in here. You could just put this in the calculator now that you've shown the substitution. So I'm going to do 3 fifths multiplied by 125 to the power of 5 over 3 minus 9 times 125, if I can type that properly. So that's 750 for the first bit. And then the next bit that I'm going to subtract, I'm just going to go through and replace those 125s with 27s. and we get minus 486 over five. So it's minus, minus 486 over five. See if we can squeeze this all in on one page. So it's gonna be 750 plus that. So we can do 750 plus 486 over five. So it's 4236 over five pi, 4236 over pi. 4, 2, 3, 6, over 5, sorry, pi. Let's see if we've got the right answer. Yep, 4, 2, 3, 6, pi over 5. And they do want to see the substitution of the limits. But if you wanted to check your answer, you could literally type this thing in here. I wouldn't advise typing in pi. I would just advise typing in the first bit because you'll get a nice answer. Um, and you can see if you get the answer, 4, 2, 3, 6 over 5. If you do, then you've clearly shown your substitution correctly. So like I said, I want you to do a mixture of A and B together here. A is about the x-axis and B is about the y-axis.